So before the, the talk today, I will give you a quick recap of yesterday's talk. Yesterday, um, we began the exciting challenge to learn about consciousness only uh, teaching. Many terms, I think, quite <laughs> uh, make many of you get headache, right? <laughs> okay. Many terms was presented yesterday, but there are some key terms to take away from yesterday's material. In the Mahayana, there are three major systems of teachings called uh, Madhya Maka, Yogacara, or Consciousness Only, and Tathagata Garbha. Okay. Um, all the different schools have the same aim, that is to give a clear explanation about karma, a cyclic existence, phenomena, and so on. It is important to learn about a different system so we can properly connect them and do not mix and match things incorrectly. All the schools share common terms, but can attach different meanings to these terms. So we should also put in effort to clar clarify these differences, okay? The system of teaching we are interested in in this year is the consciousness only system. I presented this table to you to have you understand when these teachings appear. The consciousness only teachings fall under the umbrella of Mahayana Buddhism. Okay. Another potentially confusing side um, you saw yesterday is this one, I think. The focus here is still on the three systems of teaching in the Mahayana. But over the course of Buddhism, in China, different names or descriptions have been developed uh, for these three schools. If you learn about and uh, learn more of Venerable Ancient Teachings, these terms will pop up here and there. So this table is a good reference to use when you come across these terms. So um, I will send you the, the, the PPT slides and you can keep this uh, table with you. And when you read the, the verbal insurance text, you, you may uh, check where, where the, the term fit the, where the which, which term fits which uh, meaning of this table, okay? So um, the topic we ended with yesterday was about provisional and ultimate teachings. I'm actually uh, in, in the variable instance texts, uh, provisional and ultimate and the and the other uh, system to describe the same wording in Chinese. Uh, actually, the Chinese are the same, but we have already translated the meaning 
into English, so you you won't see the 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 confusion. Okay, but I will show you why when we instant discuss this topic because the Chinese text or Sanskrit term are the same, but different school have different interpretation. Okay. So arguments about which teachings are the ultimate has been a source of conflict, especially in Chinese Buddhism, because the words used are the same, but each school has different meanings for these words. Where we finished yesterday was at the Aksha Akshayamati Sutra's definition, which is based on doctrine content, doctrinal content, sorry. Now we continue with this topic about provisional and ultimate. So so this is the 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 definition from Akshayamati uh, Sutra. So the ultimate teaching refers to the teaching um, that is, um, how can I say, uh, help practitioner to attain the liberation, okay? The provisional teaching is just to improve their uh, present situation. So, so the important teaching in the Prajna Paramita, which is ultimate, is emptiness. Okay. So the term emptiness in uh, at Madhyamaka school has the positive meaning. But in the mind only, no, sorry, the consciousness only school, it has slightly uh, negative meaning. So not everything uh, is empty. Some are empty and some are existent, okay? So empty versus uh, existence, okay. So different thing has different situation. So according to the Madhya Maka uh, schools teaching, without emptiness, nothing can be established. So emptiness means uh, things without intrinsic entity or intrinsic nature. The meaning of intrinsic nature or intrin intrinsic entity means permanent without uh, and occur without any causes and conditions. So it's not what we ex experience. So it's the incorrect idea if we think everything has uh, a fixed uh, intrinsic intrinsic entity or fixed intrinsic nature. So without, so empty means no uh, intrinsic nature. So without emptiness. So without emptiness, nothing can be established. So with emptiness, everything can be established according to Causes and conditions. So therefore, in terms of worldly dependent designation, phenomena can manifest without intrinsic entity, just like an illusion. So here I use, uh, usually in many scholars use this term dependent designation. Actually, it's not merely the, the literal meaning, dependent uh, names or something like, or ideas, something like that. So dependent designation 
refers to the idea of dependent co-arising, okay? So this is the synonym, but this term is from the perspective of people, how people perceive things. So when the all existing things uh, related to how people perceive the things. So here we use dependent designation, but actually it's the synonym of dependent co-arising, okay? <laughs> Um, in terms of the ultimate truth of no intrinsic nature, everything is empty. Dependent manifestations do not contradict the nature of emptiness. And the nature of emptiness does not obstruct the arising of manifestation. Emptiness and dependent constructs do not contradict or abstract each other. This is the two truths of middle way. Okay, This is uh, regarded as an ultimate teaching in the school of emptiness or Madhya Maka school. So please remember this is one way of define, defining what are provisional and ultimate. According to the Akshaya Mati Sutra and Sutra on the King of Samadhi, okay? So here uh, is a a verse which will uh, show us another definition of uh, in Chinese is called liao yi and bu liao yi, which is uh, which is used uh, sorry which is which is meant by ultimate and the provision in in the Akshaya Mati Sutra, okay. So the verse says, all dharmas are without intrinsic nature. Those with skills can penetrate this teaching. For those not equipped with the five requisites, the Buddha then taught the Sandhi Nirmochana Sutra. Now, the discussion turns to the second system called mere consciousness, that is illusional, which adopts canon canonical texts such as the, the Sandhi Nirmochana Sutra and Yogacara Bhumi as its doctrinal basis. The doctrines promoted by Venerable Xuanzang is ex exemplary of the system's way of practice. In the Sandhi Nirmochana Sutra, it is said that the Buddha presented three rounds of Dharma teachings. The Shravakayana teachings are regarded as the first round. The Prajaparamita Sutra and other such teachings are regarded as the second round. round. While the Sandhi Nimuchana Sutra is regarded as the third round of the of teachings. Um, in the Sandhi Nirmochana Sutra, the third round is uh, regarded as the most clear and easy to understand. Unlike the second round, it is not saying that the Prajaparamita teachings 
are bad or inferior. It's just not so clear to audience. The Dharma teachings essentially aim to explain the doctrine. All dharmas have no intrinsic nature, but the second round of teachings, that is the Prajna Paramita teachings, are presented in a way that not everyone can easily catch the meaning. And so in this respect, the third round of teachings is better. Uh, the Yoga Charabhumi was revealed and promoted by Asanga. In terms of historical timeline, Asanga also appeared after Nagarjuna's time. Therefore, the canonical texts concerning the system of mere consciousness consciousness that are illusional have a later date than the Prajna Pramida texts. So histor historically, the appearance of the two systems also align with the second and third round of teachings as found in the Sandhi Nimochana Sutra. The title Sandhi, Sandhi Niyamochana Sutra means the Sutra on revealing the profound. Okay. That means the Sutra aims to reveal that which is prof profound. But it uses a method that helps people understand these profound truths better. This is like a string with knot and untying the knot, okay? Make it clear, like an untying, untying the knot, okay? Um, do you remember how the practitioners of the Madhyamaka school using Prajna Paramita Sutra and Asha Yamati Sutra define ultimate and the provisional teaching. Can you remember? Don't worry, I will <laughs> show you again. <laughs> uh, the transcendental truth is the ultimate and true nature of all Dharma. Um, there is no other truth that is more superior. Based on this, therefore, the Madhyamaka school regards teachings on the transcendental truth as ultimate teaching. So ultimate teaching related to uh, transcendental truths and the true nature of all dharmas, okay? Now, we look at how the consciousness only school defines uh, the, the, uh, the term uh, provisional and ultimate teaching. So um, actually this is uh, in Chinese, the the term the terms are the same, but the meaning uh, different. So I I, I hope I, I later I will explain this more. So I just use the the term we just used uh, in the Madhyamaka school used. Okay, so we are looking at. Uh, the definition by consciousness only school. Okay. The Sandhi Nimochana Sutra explores the relative characteristics 
ultimate and the provisional. So they explore the re relate uh, relative characteristics of the ultimate and provisional. It is said in this sutra, that which is explained clearly and easy to understand is explicit, which uh, is similar to the, the, the term ultimate in um, the Madhyamaka school, while that which is explained and clearly and hard to comprehend is implicit. Uh, uh, which parallel or correspond to the, the term provisional, okay? Uh, accordingly, with the transcendental truth, there is a distinction between uh, implicit and explicit. So can you see the difference? Okay, <laughs> let me put it this way. So here we have another pair, uh, explicit and implicit, okay? So this is to, to, uh, to classify two, diff two kinds of teachings. In the uh, Madhyamaka school, they uh, classify the, the teaching into two group, one is ultimate, the other is provisional, okay? But in Sandhi Niyamochana Sutra, it divide all the teaching into two group. One, uh, especially about the, the teaching uh, related to the, the so the ultimate teaching in uh, Maria Maka schools. So the ultimate teaching in Madhya, Madhya Maka school uh, can have different uh, categories according to Sandhi Nimochana Sutra. So one is uh, explicit and the other is implicit. So Explicit and impl implicit, all related to ultimate truths. Okay, <laughs> quite complicated. Okay, the Madhyamaka school interprets all dhammas as everything, both worldly and transcendental, conditioned and unconditioned. Their teachings then apply emptiness to everything. The Yogacara, on the other hand, first split, splits all Dharma into various categories, saying some have intrinsic nature and some do not. So here, intrinsic nature in Yogacara school has different meaning by Madhya Maka school, although they all use intrinsic nature. <laughs> so here in Yogacara school, intrins intrinsic nature means uh, the, the characteristic of uh, things. For example, green being has its own ca characteristics and soil being has its own characteristic. So we can uh, distinguish which is uh, soil being, which is uh, green being. So the, the, the characteristic of a thing here is called intrinsic nature because it's, it's stable. So when it grew up and uh, become the fruit and the seeds are all, always the same, now usually the same, okay? So it's called intrinsic, name, intrinsic nature. So in Yogacara school, 
uh, all dharma can uh, can classify can be classified into two group some have intrinsic nature and some do not okay then they define the meaning of the characteristic of no intrinsic nature for Madhya Maka school, the definition of provisional and ultimate distinguishes worldly dharmas and transcendental dharmas. But for the Yogacara school, they focus on the transcendental dharmas and distinguish the teachings based on what is easy to understand and what is not. So they are not de denying the Prajna Paramita teaching or claiming those teaching are false. They are saying that the Prajna Paramita teachings and the truths are not as clear as the Yoga Chara teachings because the Yoga Chara teachings are easier to understand. So can you catch the point? I hope so, <laughs> okay. So using the Buddha's teaching in the Sandhi Nimochana Sutra as the basis of com comprehension, the nature of emptiness is a transcendental truth. Among the various teachings on emptiness, some possess the characteristics of being implicit and hard to, hard to understand, while others are more explicit and easier to understand. That means, according to the consciousness-only school, the teachings on emptiness can be both um, sort of provisional or um, ultimate, okay, depending on how well it is explained. This means the key focus is on the different spiritual foundations of practitioners. So here we are talking about the, the teaching teachings that are ex explicit and impl implicit. So it's not based on the teaching, but based on, uh, it, it is based on the uh, spiritual foundations of practitioners. So some uh, practitioner read the Prajna Pramita teaching they can't understand, but some can and can catch the, the meaning and attain the liberation. But, but some, because the uh, spiritual cap capacity of foundation are not good or fair enough, so they, they can't gain the meaning from the Prajna Paramita teaching. So they need to learn Sandhi. Nimochana Sutra, so that they can understand the, the, the meaning taught in the Prajna Paramita Sutra. Okay. The Sandhi Nimochana Sutra says, um, when they hear, Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. The sun. Okay. Sorry. The Sunday Nimochara Sutra says, um, all dharmas have no intrinsic nature. They do not arise nor cease. They are originally still and calm. Their true nature is 
nirvana. Concerning this doctrine, uh, low sentient beings who have already plenty roots of superior wholesomeness, purify their karmic abstractions, matured in body and mind, cultivated confidence in the Dharma teachings and accumulated sufficient stores of superior merits and wisdom. When they hear this teaching, so those who have the five uh, the, the requisites, when they hear this teaching, they will understand properly the profound implicit meaning. Toward this Dharma, they will develop strong conviction and understanding. Towards this meaning, they truly penetrate it with a wisdom that is inf infallible. Relying on such penetrating understanding to skillfully continue their practice, such sentient beings will soon realize the ultimate truth. So this is the text from Sandhi Nimochana Sutra. Now let's look at the passage in a bit more detail. The first sentence says, all Dharma have no intrinsic nature. They do not arise or cease. They are originally, originally still and calm. Their true nature is nirvana. Here, the reference to nirvana is referring to the truth, the innate nature of Dharma that is always present and always as such. So always present and always as such. This nature is neither created nor dis distorted, okay? Then it lists our five superior uh, qualities and says, concerning this doctrine, low sentient beings who have already plenty roots of superior wholesomeness. And normally when we say um, wholesome roots, one may think of the three wholesome roots of no greed, no hatred, and no ignorance. Here, the first quality is not just the average wholesome good roots. Rather, we must cultivate and possess superior wholesome and wholesome good rules. Okay. The second uh, quality purify the karmic abstractions. Here, karmic abstractions related relate to uh, defilements. So one must have purify the defilements. So here to purify, because when we say uh, someone purify the defilement, defilements, we, we, we mean that practitioner is a sage and ha has cut off, uh, cut off the, the, how can I say, cut off or uh, remove or uh, remove uh, the the defilements, right? But here, purify means to to pacify, yeah, pacify the the defilement. I mean, it not really uh, clean the defilement, but just control strongly control the defilement and the defilement can't have any, any activity 
easily. Okay, so here, purify the defilement doesn't mean they have been a sage. Okay, so the third uh, the item matured, matured in body and mind. One's body and mind must be at a state or level of accomplishment where it can easily receive and accept the profound doctrines. Okay. And uh, the fifth item, cultivated confidence in Dharma teachings. Here, cultivation of confidence refers to ex extensive study and practice of the Dharma teachings to the point where one has both deep understanding and experience of the profound doctrine and teachings. It is due to this profound understanding and experience, one develops absolute con con conviction, confidence or faith in the Dharma. The, the last item is uh, Accumulate, accumulated sufficient stores of superior merit and wisdom. Here, this quality includes some overlap with the previous qualities, but in essence, it stresses the importance of both merits and wisdom as the prerequisite for the learning and accomplishment of awakening. Once, here's a, a, a small story for you. <laughs> Once when Venerable Yinsun was ill in hospital, another Venerable came to visit him and said, you are renowned for your study and practice of wisdom. <clears throat> but surprisingly, you have named your first temple Fu Yan. Fu Yan, okay. The word Fu in Chinese means merits. Rainbow Yinshun re replied that without sufficient merits, the study of wisdom will be unsuccessful. Only with sufficient merits can one avoid all sorts of obstructions to their study and practice of wisdom. In fact, Venerable Yinshan's second temple was a land named with the word wisdom in it. So Venerable Yinshun actually practices what he preaches, which is to place emphasis on both the cultivation of merits and wisdom. Although practically for us, it is important to accumulate merit first so that our development of wisdom will be a smooth path. I hope uh, that you all embrace every opportunity to cultivate merits as you immerse, immerse yourself in the study of the Dharma. So do not overlook a simple kind deed. Every good deed when practiced with compassion and the body mind can become a supporting condition in our development of wisdom. So in my experience, uh, those who keen on studying Dharma 
uh, has less, how can I say, uh, has less motivation to to practice to accumulate merits because they think uh, it's a waste of time <laughs> to to do uh, things uh, not related to studying the the sutra or treatise. So I hope you can catch the point. We need to balance. Okay. Um, I think it's time we we have a break now. So we will be back to the class uh, in 10 minutes. Okay, uh, last back to the class. Um, in the last class, I share with you the story about why or why Venerable Yinsuan named his first temple Fu Yan. Okay, so he think without insufficient merit, we can't uh, develop our wisdom successfully. Okay, and actually, he his second temple uh, has the 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 character the character of wisdom as you can see on the screen so the second temple called Hui Zi Dhamma Ho the, the, the character Hui as you can see in red at the last uh, line on the last line Hui means wisdom okay so one temple related to merits, one temple related to wisdom. So merits is the 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 prerequisites to develop wisdom. So the uh, merits go first. Okay, I, I, this is what I I guess why he named Fu Yan first and then Hui Zi second. Marriage first, wisdom second. Okay. Um, so from this passage, we can see that concerning the teaching, all dharmas are without an intrinsic nature. Only beings equipped with superior spiritual foundations. Those who already have the ability to skillfully understand the profound nature of Dharma. Those who possess all five qualities can rely on the infallible wisdom to realize and penetrate the truth. So not everyone can do this, just these uh, practitioners has the ability. Therefore, these practitioners do not need the Buddha to further explain the Sandhi Nimochana Sutra. When such practitioners hear the profound Prajaparamita teachings, they have no problem pen penetrating the underlying underlying meaning. But not all practitioners have mature and superior virtues and merits. In other words, not everyone possesses all five superior uh, characteristics and for these practitioners, they will have difficulties understanding the teaching that all dharma have no intrinsic nature. The Sandhi Nimochana Sutra also says, um, there are sentient beings who have already planted roots of superior wholesomeness Purify the their karmic abstractions, mature in body in, in mind, 
cultivated confidence in the Dharma teachings, but have not accumulated sufficient stores of superior merits and wisdom. Here, Venerable Yinshun is explaining how there are three major types of practitioners who do not possess all five superior characteristics and how they respond to the doctrine that all dharmas are without an intrinsic nature. For sentient beings with weaker spiritual foundation, when they hear the teaching that all dharmas are without an intrinsic, trans, intrinsic nature, some will feel it is extremely profound, and although they cannot understand it, they can still develop faith in it. This is the first type of practitioners who have faith, but lack understanding. This means people lacking in the fifth superior characteristic will have this condition. This is still positive as they can gradually develop their understanding based on their faith in the teachings. Okay. For those who do not possess all five superior characteristics, they hear the teaching and although they believe it, they misunderstand it and the words they insist on using their own views to interpret the teachings. As a result, some will even think that the doctrine on all dharma are empty without intrinsic nature means that there is absolutely nothing at all. This is the second type, and those falling into this group, Nagarjuna calls them heretical Mahayanist. Consequently, with their erroneous interpretation of emptiness, these practitioners gain no benefits themselves and instead regress in their cultivation of wisdom. Moreover, when they share the incorrect understanding of teachings with others, some of the listeners will develop attachment to the view of annihilation, while others may even develop aversion to the doctrine on emptiness. By leading others astray with their incorrect views, they harm others and create karmic abstractions towards their own spiritual progression. Then there is the third group. These are people who are not e equipped with any of the five superior characteristics. And when they, when they hear the teaching that all dharmas are empty without intrinsic nature, they do not understand, do not understand it and do not believe it. Such people even say, this is not what the Buddha taught. This is the teaching of Mara. So Mara means the, the, the evil uh, spirits, spirits, okay? This is like the situation described by Nagarjuna in the exegesis on the great perfection of wisdom, which says, Sometime after Buddha's parinirvana, 
Shravakayana practitioners who have attached attachments to the Shravakayana teachings. Upon hearing the Prajaparamita teachings, that all dharmas are ultimately empty, felt as though a knife was stepped through their heart and claim this is not the Buddha's teachings. So in terms of the five qualities, they are, they are a spectrum, spectrum of practitioners, but gradually they can be grouped into, um, I'm sorry, Generally, they can be grouped into uh, first beings with weak spiritual foundations who believe but do not understand. Second, believe and misunderstand. And third, those who do not believe and do not understand the teaching are uh, emptiness at all. It is for these three types of practitioners that the Buddha therefore expound, expounded the Sandhi Nimochana Sutra. Okay. The Sandhi Nimochana Sutra says, I rely on three types of no intrinsic nature to implicitly teach how all dharma are without an intrinsic nature. These three types of no intrinsic nature essentially ap approaches emptiness via three aspects of each type of no intrinsic nature relates to a certain type of dharma or phenomena. So, so they have different interpretation how to look at how this kind of uh, dharma uh, are so called without intrinsic nature. It's not really no intrinsic nature, but from a special aspect, they are said to have no intrinsic nature, okay? This is where the Yoga Chara school split, splits all phenomena into the categories of uh, delusional phenomena of er uh, erroneous attachment, phenomena dependent on causes and conditions, and the state of accomplishment of perfection. So this is my um, interpretation of the three uh, kind of dharma, okay? Um, many different translation, but this is my, my translation based on my understanding, okay? So using three types of no intrinsic nature, the consciousness only doctrines explain how these three types of phenomena or state have no intrinsic nature. This is how the consciousness only school makes the profound clear and easy to understand. But note that this approach already diverges from the meaning of emptiness underlying the Prajaparamita Sutras. Put simply, using the three types of no intrinsic nature, one can remove a delusional phenomena of erroneous attachment. And in this context, the teachings say all dharmas are without an intrinsic nature. 
it is this first type of phenomena that needs to to be overcome. That is the attachment to these the delusions as real need to be overcome. However, uh, dependent co-arising, which is uh, phenomena dependent on causes and conditions, and the true nature of dhammas, which is the state of accomplishment of perfection, are said to be existent. This is because phenomena dependent on causes and conditions is the basis upon which all things arise and the state of accomplishment of perfection is the truth of all things. So these two kind of dharma cannot, uh, should be existent, okay? So such a teaching means that not everything is non-existent. In other words, there are some dharmas and that do not exist. And some dharma do exist. Okay, as you can see on the screen. So first category of dharma, non-existent. The second and third uh, category of dharmas uh, are existent, okay? Um, this helps to address the three main groups of practitioners with weak spiritual foundations. Those who believe but do not understand the teaching can rely on the three types of no intrinsic, na intrinsic nature to continue and progress in their practice. Those who misunderstand it to mean absolutely nothing exists will not develop such misunderstanding. And those who do not believe and do not understand the doctrine that all dharmas are empty will not be opposed to this teaching. So this can, um, how can I, so the, the teaching of uh, Sandhi Nimochana Sutra can improve these three groups of practitioners, okay, to have them uh, gradually uh, come back to the, the, on the right track, okay. So uh, according to the explanation in the Sandhi Nimochana Sutra, practitioners equipped with all five superior characteristics can understand how emptiness uh, establishes the dependent existence of all dharmas and that the teachings and that the teachings on emptiness can be practiced and lead one to accomplish realization of truth and attain liberation. Such practitioners would regard the doctrine on emptiness as an ultimate teaching. But practitioners whose spiritual foundations are weak will have difficulty understanding how emptiness can establish the existence of everything. And depending on their spiritual capacity, some may even miss, some may miss, even mistake that the doctrine of emptiness destroys the existence of all dharmas. From the perspective of these practitioners, the teachings on emptiness becomes implicit. That is, 
such teachings are hard to understand and hence requires the Buddha to further use explicit explanations to help them bridge the gap in understanding. So the Prajaparamita teachings are legitimate and can be practiced. It is just that those practitioners who do not have all five superior characteristics will think nothing is right with the Prajaparamita teachings. So the fault does not lie with the Prajaparamita teachings. It is due to the practitioner, okay? So this situation is captured in Nagarjuna's explanation of the ocean. To humans, the ocean is extremely deep, but for the king of Ashuras is a different uh, beings called Ashura. So for the king of Ashuras, when he stands in the ocean, the water does not even reach his navel. So to the Ashura king, the ocean is not deep at all. Another analogy is a uh, mountain tribe who hears that salt can enhance the flavor of food. So they decide to just eat salt directly. The salt is that they, the, the result is that they get nothing but bitter salty taste. With this experience, they will question how can salt enhance flavor? <laughs> For many of us, it is a basic and common understanding that adding a bit of salt to food can enhance the flavor. However, for the mountain tribe who do not know about salt and how to use it, without simple and clear instructions, they cannot comprehend the concept that salt improves flavor. Therefore, under this definition of explicit and implicit, whether something is profound or simple, implicit or explicit, will depend on the spiritual foundation of the listener. This is not the same as the definition concerning ultimate or provisional, which is based on the doctrine itself. So under this definition, the Prajna Pramina Sutra and other such texts that teach the doctrine are all dharmas are empty without intrinsic nature and all dharmas are dependent constructs. For those people in the assembly of Prajna Pramida teaching, who have superior spiritual foundations. This doctrine is an explicit teaching. In contrast, in that same assembly, for those with weaker spiritual foundations who are not equipped with all five superior characteristics, the doctrine is too profound and, and so it too, and is too profound to learn the teaching. And so the, the teaching to learn is implicit. It is because of this that they require another type of explanation that is simple and explicit. 
So they need further explanations that they can understand, and this can help them develop their faith and confidence in emptiness and the way how to practice it. These further explanations and teachings are regarded as explicit in the eyes of such practitioners under this definition. So here is the table to, to summarize <laughs> the, 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 the talk uh, con concerning ultimate uh, provisional or explicit or Im implicit. So to summarize, here is the table which I hope will make clear the matter on what is. Uh, here we have a Chinese, Liao Yi. Here, can you see? Liao Yi here, and Bu Liao Yi here. Actually, what we talk about is to interpret Liao Yi and Bu Liao Yi. We can have different way to interpret Liao Yi. One is ultimate, the other is explicit. So uh, uh, in terms of Bu Liao Yi, the two different way to interpret is provisional, and implicit. I hope you, you can understand what I just talked about, okay? So basically the Madhya, Maka and consciousness only systems of thought adopt different sutras as layer bases. These sutras in turn have different definitions of Liao Yi here and Bu Liao Yi. So Liao Yi can mean ultimate or explicit. Um, Bu Liao Yi here can mean provisional or implicit. In the English language, you may think this, the, the distinction is clear because we have uh, given the, the specific meaning to, to translate this, this Chinese term. Actually, it's from Sanskrit term, okay? So, but in Chinese or Sanskrit, the terms are the same, okay? So one is Liao Yi, the other is Bu Liao Yi. Now, Liao Yi means ultimate or explicit. Bu Liao Yi here means provisional, or implicit. Um, the Akshaya Mati Sutra says Liao Yi is ultimate and Bu Liao Yi is provision. While the Sandhi Nirmochana Sutra says Liao Yi is explicit and Bu Liao Yi is implicit. <laughs> In the Chinese language, the exact same words are used in both sutras. And so confusion can arise when one does not make clear which definition is being used. This point about which teachings are Liao Yi and Bu Liao Yi has been a long-standing issue of con con contention the, the standing issue of contention between the two systems of thought. Luckily for us, Venerable Insurance has helped clarify the matter. So hopefully we do not fall into the same, the same misunderstanding, okay? Essentially, when uh, uh, Madhya Maka School says a teaching is Liao Yi, it means that the teaching is about transcendental dharmas or the truths. On the other hand, when the consciousness-only school says a teaching is Liao Yi, it means 
the teaching which relates to the truth is easily understood by listeners. Um, I think uh, it's a, a good place to stop and leave some time for you to to ask question. Okay, <laughs> we have uh, seven minutes, I think. <laughs> So any question about the talk today? I hope today is clearer than yesterday. <laughs> Every day is improve, improving. Okay. So any question? Still very hard or a bit clearer? <laughs> yes, um, uh, Nico. Yes, hi. Thank you, Venerable. Thank um, you. As I'm looking at this last um, slide, is the I can't pronounce it properly. The psalm, which sutra would I look at first or read first? The sama, the, the definition two? Uh, a, a definite one, I think, is better. It's easier for you. Okay. Because I, you look like have superior quality. <laughs> Who, me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it's easier to learn Prajnaparamita teaching uh, first, I mm -hmm. think, in my opinion or in my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, you need the help of Venerable Insurance's interpretation. His interpretation is clear okay. and easy to understand. All but right. It's pity. It's not in English. <laughs> oh, it's not. Okay. Uh, we, we are translating his uh, works into mm -hmm. English now. Mm -hmm. I hope in, in 10 years. I, mm -hmm. I, you know, this uh, very important work called The Way to Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are we translate the chapter five. This is from chapter five because okay. the older version is quite literal. So many readers can't understand the 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 expression of uh, verbal insurance. So they have a lot of questions when they read it. Right. <laughs> very literal. <laughs> it is very hard. Okay. So we uh, so it's not a fault of former translator because it's really really hard to. Okay to interpret or to translate. Mm -hmm. So the foundation in Taiwan, Insurn Foundation, is translating this book now. And I hope it, uh, we can release the new version probably in five years. I hope so. So then we, we can understand uh, the first definition Okay, the first group of definition. Yeah. So it it, it might answer your question. Yeah. Um, I th I have to think about it. One thing that um, I wanted to ask was uh, in terms of knowing, uh, in terms of emptiness. Yes. Um, my understanding, but I I use the Satipatthana meditation. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, emptiness is a really difficult thing to grasp. But, yeah. you know, what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm in that moment as I'm breathing. Yeah. That gives me an understanding of what emptiness is because there's nothing happening in the moment, in that moment. You know, it's like take, move everything aside, you know, worries and thoughts and just be in that moment. So my question is, what is uh, a preliminary way 
to contemplate emptiness in med- in my meditation. Yeah, okay. Um, actually, your experience is similar to a person, a, a practitioner who uh, are contemplating the emptiness. Okay, so so we 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 can have. Uh, sorry, let me put it this way. We we have two different kind of meditation okay. in my uh, interpretation. Mm-hmm. One is inside meditation. This is the the only one way to to gain liberation. Mm-hmm. And the other one is a uh, sort of uh, the meditation of tranquility. You know, tranquility mm-hmm. uh, make your mind calm. Right. When you make your mind calm, you can have similar experience of inside meditation mm-hmm. to realize the emptiness. Mm-hmm. So clear now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So the the uh, the basic or the the easy basic way to to understand emptiness is to uh, contemplate the phenomena which arise dependent on causes and conditions and nothing is permanent mm-hmm. okay yes. so so like this will help us to uh, to uh, minimize our attachment to to what we see what we hear because it's changed all the time yeah that when we see the bubble, we don't grasp the bubble. We know it disappear soon, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we need to realize all, all phenomena are impermanent. Mm-hmm. And all, and so bad can become good <laughs> and we can have a hope, but also good can become bad so we need to put more effort to improve ourselves otherwise the the change happen all the time it can be a positive positive direction and it also can be a negative direction it depends how we uh, uh, behave or how we practice the the dharma is that clear how how can it how does it become bad? How can it uh, become bad? Is there uh, if we uh, how can I say if we for example if we don't uh, have exercise our health condition will become bad you know right yes <laughs> if we keep uh, uh, have physical exercise mm-hmm. and our condition health condition become better something like that. So all depends on the conditions, the develop, the, the direction of development depends on uh, the conditions, okay? So a clear, <laughs> not okay. so sure. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll reflect on that and ask again, okay. but Thank it's you. a little, yeah, I'm becoming a little, a little bit clearer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, also, the same situation when you uh, uh, come across, uh, sorry, to meet your friends, some friends you dislike and some you like. Mm-hmm. And when you work together, you may have different emotion with them, happy <laughs> or uh, unpleasant, something like that. And when it happens, we just look at why this or oh, well, what the causes make our emotion happy or unpleasant mm-hmm. and it's that will uh, remove the negative uh, mm-hmm. emotions soon because it can change when we realize the causes yeah and you, your emotion will change <laughs> yeah okay yeah okay. Good. Yeah, that I understand. Thank you. Yeah, 
Thank you. Yeah, it's time we we need to finish the class. Okay.